Welcome back to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this video I'll be showing a couple uh, new to the shop Cincinnati machines. This particular one here is a 1953 Cincinnati tray top 15 by 54. This lathe I actually brought it home about three years ago. Kind of did a little initial cleanup. Uh, chains belts, put a couple bearings in the motor, set it into place, and that's pretty much as far as I got with it. I have a few pieces of equipment in the shop that I got to moved into place, and that's as far as they got. And I'm trying to get them one by one uh, up and running. I actually have a job where I needed a taper attachment on this, on this lathe, so that was a good motivator. Here we're looking at the speed selectors for changing the different speeds. Uh, it's got speeds ranging from 30 to 1200 RPM and you just kind of line the color code, the color lines up and right now it's kind of set on the yellow. Once you got the three yellow set up then you got the three speeds within the, the yellow or vice versa you line the reds up for blues. Um, it actually shifts pretty nice. I, I kind of like it the way it shifts. Here you just got the line that uh, you line it up for your uh, your thread or your feed rates, and follow it down, and it'll tell you uh, you know A E. You come down here, you know, and set it on A and E. If I had another hand free, you know, it could turn it, it would go all the way over. And that's just a slide for changing your, uh, your feeds. Here you can see the ways. They are flame hardened ways and in awesome shape. There's a couple of little teeny nicks on up on the back side, but otherwise great shape. There's a good look at the taper attachment. Here I got the fall arrest just just uh, sitting up there and snugged up, and came with the uh, steady rest. And this is part of the job that I needed to taper attachment for. Uh, what they are is they'll be tapered plugs for plugging off uh, cooler lines um, on our compressors when they get a leak. It just plugs them off and pretty much eliminates it. This lathe does have a little bit uh, more special meaning to me. It belonged to an old machinist friend of mine that was born in 1918 and passed away in 2011. After he passed away, there was a local businessman that bought his building and all the contents. And the story was that everything got shipped to Reno. And it wasn't till years later when right down the road, there was an ad in Craigslist for something that was being sold. And about a, less than a mile away I went to look at it and found this dirty old lathe in the back and kind of suspected that it belonged to my friend which it did and I was able to work out a deal and get it. I first met him in the early 80s when I actually uh, rented a duplex from him and then I used to go to a shop <laughs> all the time after work and hang out with them and I'm pretty sure that this this slave was the original I believe he was the original owner I don't have any proof you know to prove that though I kind of like the satin dials where you don't have the glare on them now this is one that uh, if you're moving at 5,000 it's only moving half the distance 
So 5,000 there is removing a total of 5,000 off the diameter, which is the same as all my other lays. Found these tucked inside the uh, cabinet on one of the bases. Uh, this does have the gear and the plate if you were going to uh, change over to metric which that plate has never been uh, installed nor has that gear and then it's got the uh, you know all the setup that's electrical for the for the switch and then it came with the uh, all the setup for changing over for the uh, metric gear for cutting metric All right, the next tool is sitting at my place of employment, covered up, um, waiting for a nice weekend with no rain where I could do some rearranging and bring it home.
Here we're in Southern California, uh, Huntington Park, uh, loading it up. I, for a while now, I knew I wanted a Cincinnati, and I knew about a 24 inch is about as big as I could go in my home, my small home shop. And I let my buddy know, and he would send me uh, whatever listings or auctions and stuff he'd see, and they'd be text, there'd be some Texas and back east, and but they weren't exactly what I wanted. And then all of a sudden, this one popped up. He sent me the link, and I thought, all right, that's that's driver, that's uh, driving range uh, from where we are. There's a picture of my buddy. He not only found it for me, but he offered to take his rig, truck and trailer, and go with me and pick it up. So we did a day trip. He left his place quite early, and it was quite a bit of driving to Southern California and back. But we did it in one day, and I appreciate. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it very much. As you can see, one of the first things I'll be doing is scraping uh, paint. They they tend to put paint on everything, so all the metal me the metal parts that aren't supposed to have paint all be scraped off. And that's shown the gib, which I think is a good sign because the gib's out quite a ways. I don't see any issues so far. I don't want to run it until I uh, get a good chance to clean it and flush oil and check it out. I've been watching uh, Steve Summers has been doing quite a bit, um, you know, showing the servicing and stuff on these. There will definitely be videos to come in the future uh, showing it running. Hopefully there won't be any issues with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.